Thank you for joining us. I'm Paul Wilson. And I'm Chris Hemke. And this is Diesel Performance Podcast. Guys, today we got a great topic for you. We're going to be talking about manual regens, um, emissions equipment, emissions equipment health, how to check it, what to do with it. Everybody's favorite topic. It really... We get calls <laughs> all the time, and I, I like that this is this week's episode because I actually have a... An example recently of something that happened that warranted a truck to come here that never had a problem in the first place. Oh, so fun. we'll dive into that. I, 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 I'll give a shout out to our super tech, Jeremy. He caught me uh, outside and yeah. said, uh, hey, I'm doing this manual regen. It's for this reason, blah, blah, blah. We talked about it. I was like, oh, this is a really cool topic. Yeah. And he suggested that you know we try to expand on it a little bit. Um, quick announcement. We got a sad announcement. Also at the top of the show, we want to give a shout out to uh, Turbo Tom and his family uh, and our condolences. Uh, if you guys haven't heard, uh, at Rocky Top, um, the Rocky Top event here this past yep. weekend, uh, there was an accident. Uh, Turbo Tom passed away. Really, really sad news for the industry. Uh, we had nothing but respect for him. We had him on the show uh, once. Well, well, yeah, we had to talk with him. We had Tom on after UCC, right? Um, we did that show or that episode at our homes remotely. Yeah. Um, and. Rarely do you talk to guys and you get like goosebumps while talking to them because of their raw passion and their drive to do the things that they do. And, and Tom was exactly that. 100%. Um, you know, seeing a lot of guys on social media making comments about, you know, he was the true pioneer of the DIY garage guy, which wholeheartedly he was. Yep. He has a huge YouTube presence, um, a lot of uh, great videos to carry on his legacy and the things that you know he endured over the last few years building his badass drag truck. Yeah. Um, so again, our hearts and our, our prayers and our thoughts go out to him and his family. You know, we uh, it's sad to see, um, but on the bright side, you know, at least he was doing something that he truly cared about. And he was truly passionate about, um, and that should be motivation for all of us to, uh, you know, don't sweat the little don't sweat the little things, right? And thoroughly yeah. enjoy the things that you do because you know, unfortunately, uh, that can go at any time. That's right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey. Uh, on a different note, uh, we want to give a shout out to our sponsors who help make this show possible. Yep. You can support us by supporting them. Uh, Duramax Tuner, Calibrated Power, that's where Chris and I work full time. Yep. Uh, so you can give a call over here and talk to us about any of your diesel performance needs. We cover Duramax, Cummins, Power Stroke, EcoBoost, tractors. Um, we're into it. So yeah, if we can help you, definitely give us a shout and let us know. WC Fab, your one-stop shop for pretty much anything powder coated. That's it. Right? You want to do some cool color schemes on your truck? They can be the ones to do that for you. Their huge state-of-the-art facility offers everything to be powder-coated from intercooler pipes to frames if you really wanted to get crazy and creative. Yeah. Um, they offer an array of different turbo piping, different turbocharger upgrade options and things like that. So, you know, if you're trying to deck out your truck and make it one-of-a-kind, WC Fab is, uh, is that avenue. That's right. And if you want the best of the best when it comes to common rail fuel injection system components, we talk about Exergy Performance. Uh, that's who we use in our vehicles, that's who we use in our competition vehicles, that's who we recommend all day, every day. Uh, most of these parts, if not all of them, can be found over at xdp.com. XDP is your one-stop shop for diesel performance. They really do carry just about every line you can imagine. Uh, they're great to work with. They also have a lot of, uh, they've been expanding their, like, their own brand yep. of manufacturing and fabrication there. Uh, so check out their parts and see what they can they can do to help. Make sure anytime you're talking to any of our sponsors, please mention Diesel Performance Podcast. It really makes them feel good about uh, sponsoring the show. <laughs> now, Chris, uh, talking about man manual regens, I know we've talked about it before on the show, so guys, bear with us here. We just want to give a basics for the new listeners, talk a little bit about what is a DPF. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess we start with like how the emissions... The, the general exhaust works and the emission systems yeah, I works. Think, I think let's keep it to the the exhaust itself today, yeah. right? Makes sense. So this also varies. Like we're 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 kind of in a position where if we're talking about Ford, we're talking about GM, we're talking about Cummins, we're talking about cab chassis trucks versus yeah. pickup trucks versus different era, different years of trucks. Um, the systems could be laid out differently, but... The order of that. The order, the layout, yeah. right? One has a CAT before the DPF, one has a DPF before the catalytic converter, uh, where the DOC sits in the mix, right? These change, right. but the general consensus here is, is that these trucks from 07 up are gonna have a DPF filter and they're gonna have a catalytic converter. Yeah. Simple as yeah. that. Yeah, call the, call the DOC in DOC, these, right? Yeah. yeah, so call the DOC. Um, 
not all these trucks are going to have DEF, uh, so d diesel exhaust fluid. All of them are going to have an EGR, because EGRs came out right. first. 03 to 06, by 06, 07, uh, EGRs mm -hmm. were on all of the major diesels. So um, as you're looking at this, just consider your exhaust is going to come out of the turbo. It then is has a lot of soot in it or has a high amount of soot in it and other, other things in it that are bad for the air, according to the EPA. Uh, they're going to run through this filter. That filter is called the diesel particulate filter. It's actually going to catch what looks like smoke. Smoke is unburnt fuel or diesel particulate matter. Uh, the DPF is going to catch that. So it fills up with all of this soot is, mm -hmm. is the best explanation we have for it. Um, that filter then needs to be superheated. That's what the DOC or the catalytic converter would, would be used for. So that DOC heats up the DPF and it burns everything off. Anytime you're burning off that soot, that's called a regen. Uh, there's a couple different types of regen. There, there really is, and I think you know different trucks. And nowadays, when we talk the the newer platforms, all three trucks offer all three regeneration intervals. Some of the earlier trucks, you know, your 07 to 10 era trucks, uh, they're probably going to offer the opportunity of two, but realistically, they practice one. Um, so, you know, I would say the the most common or what you're going to see on all platforms is what's called an active regen. Yep. An active regen is after X amount of soot has been captured in the filter, the truck is going to perform a burn off, hence the active regen where the truck is heating up the catalyst, letting that filter burn off the particulate matter. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So it's actually, it's using fuel. Yep. That, that's like the key component is you're using extra fuel to heat up that DOC, and to heat up that DPF. Mm -hmm. So that's that's when we, we qualify that active regen. Now a passive regen, that's what you're hoping to get. That's like the comments. Well, that's, really good that's why this. I started yeah. with what's going to be the most common across all the platforms. Then you get into a passive regen. Cummins were, were the first to, to really come into this. The Fords do it now, yeah. the GMs do it now. And what the passive regen is, is the truck identifies that it is operating in an, uh, an operating range and it's maintaining a certain temperature where it's able to passively burn off particulate matter, which basically means as it's passing its way through the filter, it's just burning it off. So it's not physically yeah. capturing more particulate matter, it's just burning it off as it's being made. Um, so this is more less like when you're driving down the freeway, a lot of rural back roads, operating the truck around 50, 60 mile an hour for a consecutive period of time, yep. you're going to have that opportunity and that's going to help with mileage because the truck is essentially not dosing more fuel for that regeneration interval. Um, you're going to be dosing that added fuel when it's going into an active. That's right. The third option is something that, you know, mainly what we're talking about today and that is a manual regen, which is a regeneration practice that you are forcing the truck to go into. Yeah. So that's going to be done. An Engine Sight CTS3, they offer uh, manual regens. Snap I know on Solstice Snap on tools. Solstice, all yeah. the OEM tools are going to be able to offer sure. this. And that's basically you parking the truck in a parking lot, and it goes through a 20 minute or a half hour burn where the truck is, you know, idling at, you know, 2,500 RPM for a half hour standstill, and it's manually or uh, it's it's actively burning off that particular matter. Yeah in a standstill. Yeah, so, so and I think back to like when LMLs first came out, like most of the LMMs in the Duramax lines here, 07 and a half to 10 trucks, most of them just got deleted as soon as they had a problem. Yep. Dealerships probably knew more about a manual regen than anybody else right. because anybody in the aftermarket space back then we weren't able to throw an exhaust on. Yeah, well, yeah. we weren't able to control manual regens yeah. 10 years ago. That right. didn't exist. So, well, yeah, yeah, yeah I think like but some of the toolings, tunes could right? Some of the toolings, like but there, like there most was, of the tuners and things like that, if you know, you're in a, a lot shop, of the performance. Yeah, you shops. just you threw an exhaust on it and you tuned it. That's just what you did. Then the LMLs came out, emissions enforcement got tougher. Uh, so we started to see manual regens being a viable option to, to try to prevent replacing a very expensive component of the truck. Your DPF, just that filter. God, that system, I mean, nowadays I know it can run you, you, you know, you're well over a thousand bucks, but yeah. I think even back then, I think you were still still talking minimum a thousand bucks to talk about a DPF, we have, if not more. We have a truck in the shop right now, it's an 18 Ram, the replacement filter is four thousand dollars. Yeah. You know, we're talking big money. And it the is, filter, it is. The filter had a lot of pressure in it. The filter is completely one of the worst filters we've honestly ever seen. It's yeah. sad to see, but those things happen. It happens, right? So, so doing a manual regen is this idea that like, hey, it's the only time I can actually force a regen when the truck's not driving. One of the parameters that everybody has on their, their regen cycle is you have to be moving. That's a way to prevent some really 
or, or the idea back then was this will prevent some really problematic issues with like sitting in a cornfield and having the truck go into regen or yeah. sitting in traffic and having the truck go into regen and getting super hot, not having air passing over it to cool things off, right? Yeah. You're, you're building heat on purpose. Air moving over it will help cool off all the other components of your truck to where you're, you're not having massive issues with like reliability and things like that. Um, however, we've noticed that as we've made it past that like 16 mark, 16, 17 mark, now the manufacturers are starting to become a little bit looser with giving you a manual regen option in the cab. I know the Fords, the newer Fords have mm -hmm. a manual regen option on the button right in the cab. A lot of the semis out there, bigger bigger yep. tractors, uh, tr um, bigger tractors, trucks, things like that. A lot of them will have a manual regen button right in the cab so that if you are sitting there and you know what you're doing, you can actually initiate a regen while you're, while you're in park and while you're in a stable environment. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about about kind of what that looks like and what to expect from a manual regen. Uh, the first thing I want to hit on with you, Chris, though, is just like common reasons that DPFs get clogged. Like, why are guys having to deal with manual regens if the design of the truck is to either use an active or a passive? And and honestly, when an active or a passive regen is happening, you likely will never know. Like, you, you could own one of these trucks for a long time, and if you didn't know anything about emissions equipment, you would never know if your truck went into regen. Um, so what's happening with the DPS? What's causing them to get clogged that they need a manual regen? Well, I think the first thing that you're going to run into and is going to be mechanical inability, right? So you're going to talk about boost leaks in the air charge system, um, dirty air filters, um, even a dirty mass airflow sensor where the mass airflow is not operating correctly. There's these different okay. variables where the truck is either not dosing fuel or potentially running dirty where the truck is, is running rich in yeah. a sense. And that's going to cause for a dirty burn within the, uh, within the exhaust side of the system, causing the filter to clog or building up too much. Uh, particulate matter to where it's in a constant regen or it's not able to burn the matter off fast enough and the truck just is freaking out at that point. Some of those, and some of those you can spot. If you have a good set of gauges, you might be able to see, like I know on the LMLs, you can see soot grams. On the newer Fords, they actually have a gauge that shows you DPF. I don't know how accurate of a gauge right. it is, but it but there's a dial. Um, the Cummins, does the Cummins have a gauge internally? No. No. Yeah, so so some of this stuff you can see and you can monitor and you can say, hey, I, I see the DPF is filling up. Right. I know it's going to need to get a regen. Almost all of the manufacturers have a limit on, on passive and active regens. So you have to be moving above 35 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. The truck has to be up at a certain operating temperature. Uh, so it won't happen like first thing on a real cold day as soon as you drive down to go get the mail, right? right. Like you, it actually has to be up and moving for mm -hmm. a while before it'll kick on. And then if you come to a stop sign, it'll turn itself off. So it'll actually pause the regen cycle. Well, if you live in stop and go traffic, that's brutal. Yeah. Like, like if you're, if you, you know, live in a suburban area and you have to go through a lot of stop and go traffic for long periods of time, or you're a landscaper and your whole day is just running around res residential neighborhoods, that can be tough if you don't get the truck up to that 55, 60 miles an hour and let it burn itself off. And a full regen, God, on some of the older trucks could take you 30, 40, 40 minutes of driving. Right. Uh, the newer trucks, I've noticed the filters are are having some size changes, so yeah, I'm they, not sure what those regions they went, look like now. They went from small to big to small again. And right? I think depending on the application, <laughs> like if you look at the can on a newer Ford, I mean the cans on the Ford are probably the biggest, the whole system is pretty much the length of the truck. Yeah. When you look at the Rams, the, the unique thing about the Ram is in the, in, in the 19 plus fifth gens, the exhaust systems are actually five inch out from underneath the truck going into the cans, and the cans are, are very Big. Like they're yeah. similar size to the four gens, which we have a lot of experience with. Um, but then you get into the L5P space, and uh, they they actually downsize those compared to the uh, the LMLs, and they actually regen. They actively regen more frequently than an LML and stop and go driving because the canisters are smaller, but they have enabled the uh, passive regen into that, which helped counter some of that. So yeah. it's just interesting as time progresses how one manufacturer had developed a specific process and then other manufacturers kind of adopt that same process and how they switch it up, you know, over the course of a new RPO. So. They, re they really are always trying to make it better. You know, we're, we're, we're obviously well aware that there's a lot of emissions equipment failures out there that motivates a lot of guys to look at deleting their emissions equipment, in my opinion, preemptively. Yeah. Um, 
all we're saying is that if you're if you're not in that situation that you can't delete it and, and you're like, wow, I really could just repair this, that's becoming more and more possible. Right. All of the OEMs have every vested financial interest to have this stuff last to at least the length of your warranty. Right. After that, do they care about you? I don't think so, but, but <laughs> that's just my opinion, right? Um, so, so as you're looking at these things and you're and you're considering what your options are, a lot of this stuff is just comes down to troubleshooting. Yeah. I don't know how many DPFs I've seen fail because it was a guy who was in stop and go traffic all the time. It built up. There was no boost leak. There was no fuel system issue. There was no MAF issue or intake issue. But the sensors, the actual pressure sensors inside of the DPF, there's gener generally there's a pre and a post pressure sensor, and the the delta or the difference between those two numbers lets it calculate how much soot is built up in the DPF. That, that's how just about all of them work. Um, if those sensors fail or if those sensors get plugged up or if they get burnt out because you're superheating this piece of metal with all of this precious metal inside of it, um, that's going to happen, right? And then that can cause larger, more systemic issues. But really, the DPF, you, you know, a $100 sensor or a $4,000 DPF, you just want to know what's going on. So one of my suggestions uh, is always going to be, you know, the, the better of a gauge system you're able to put on your truck, the more likely you are to to prevent some of these issues, as opposed to just running out and deleting the truck instead. Yeah. Um, with this also, I think symptoms, I think just about the only symptom I know of is like check engine lights. I think most guys are going to have a hard time coming up with symptoms of the truck was acting this way before I got the check engine light. Can you think of anything on that, Chris? Crack DPFs. Crack DPFs, okay. So you could tell, I mean, if, if you have a, an emissions on truck and it is blowing smoke, that is a pretty pretty cut, clear and dry understanding that you have something going on inside the, the filter itself. So sometimes these trucks aren't gonna throw codes, and I, we've seen that it firsthand has happened, here. Yeah. Um, so you'll get some some black smoke. You'll have uh, uh, a frequent regen, you know, which you wouldn't know unless there was gauges in the truck, right? right. But that that black smoke is going to be something. Um, what I've also seen a lot of is when the truck comes to an idle. So when the truck is in regen. Um, in an active region and you come to a stop, the engine's RPM does creep up a couple hundred RPM. Um, so I'll have some guys that will be like, well, the truck, even though it doesn't show it to you or tell you on the dash, the truck's been in a constant region for a while and they don't understand why yeah. that's going to warrant tooling and stuff like that. They might see their coolant temps go up and, and whatnot. Um, but I, I would say that that's probably the, the couple of things that you would see aside from the obvious, what we all hope for is, hey, what kind of codes does the truck have? <laughs> Why do we think or believe that there is an issue? Or guys that literally run the trucks into the ground and the trucks have a lack of power because of so much carbon buildup that exists either in the filter or in the EGR due to um, you know, a lack of burnoff, which yeah. is generally going to be due to a mechanical issue in some way, shape, or form prior. Yeah. So. God, that's a brutal one too. That if is. you've really, if you've really gotten it to that point, uh, it's tough. Generally, if you have an emissions equipment code uh, on any of the OEMs, they'll actually warn you so many miles until yep. the vehicle's limited by speed, and it'll limit you down to like 55 miles an hour. And then if you really keep pushing it past that yep. that warning, uh, it'll limit you down to five miles an hour to where you can pretty much load the thing on and off of a tow truck, and that's all it's going to move. Yep. Uh, so, so this is one of those cases that if you're going to have a problem, we we are hoping for codes. Um, because otherwise it, it can be tough to, to, to know what's going on or, or to have an idea of what's going on. Now, a couple of things, Paul, that I want to touch on. You know, we, we said that we were going to bring up the manual region, you know, and kind of pick that back up. You know, this isn't something when you own a newer truck with the emissions, whether the manufacturer gives you the ability to do a region manually yes. or if you have tooling of your own to perform a manual region. This isn't something that we recommend to uh, become a staple in your operation. This isn't meant to, oh, once a week I'm going to perform a manual <laughs> regen and, and burn it off. The manual regen is designed under certain circumstances to be able to do this, to figure out or to verify what in the system is upset. Um, and the one common thing that I see guys make the mistake on, and this is one of the customers that we had locally, um, the truck won't manual regen if there's a check engine light. Right. If you have a check engine light, no regen is going to take place uh, in, a, in, a, in a, you know, a, a forced, you know, manner. It's not going to happen. Yep. So, you know, just, uh, you know, FYI, you know, when you're, when you're looking at doing so. The thing with a manual regen, if the truck is sitting standstill, it's operating at such a high RPM, it's building a lot of heat because you don't have that airflow coming through the cooling stack. 
Um, so it's it's very detrimental to the vehicle and, and tear that down. And not only that, but break down the oil quality. You know, that's, the viscosity. That's what of the I was oil. just going to bring up. I see a lot of of like actual um, dealership mechanics saying, "Oh, after a regen, the the procedure is now perform an oil, oil change." Yeah. Uh, because you are, you know, like you're you're, it you're working it, man. <laughs> like, like, it, it, and that's something I guess we should hit on here is like what to expect from a manual regen. I think you you, you phrase it well, man. It sounds brutal. Yeah. Like it, it sounds. Your truck is stationary and it's running at this high RPM and RPM you're not comfortable with. Constant for for a long period of time, 20, 30 yeah. minutes is pretty normal to see them go through. I've had I've blown up uh, more engines than I care to talk about over the years and. I've had pistons disintegrate in the motor and have pieces of piston go out my tailpipe. I've had connecting rods go out the side of the block on a motor. That is literally that sound for a half hour straight <laughs> when you're doing a, a manual regen. It is not healthy and anyone that has a decent air, an ear for the mechanical operation of yeah. an engine, it's not comfortable. It no. is not comfortable at all. No. Um, it and yeah, the high heat, I think, is one of those things that I really worry about. It's also, it's not a procedure that you should set and walk away, uh, which I think I've seen more like rookies kind of yeah. fall into that trap. Oh, this is going to take 30 minutes. I'll set it and I'll go inside come and go back. get lunch and come back and see how it's, it's doing. It's something you really want to, especially if you're owner operator of the truck. Yeah. It's your money invested. You're going to. You're going to want to be around. You're going to want to be observant of what's going on. At least that's how I would be. Same, same. Uh, and then be safe with it. You know, you, you, you're blowing super hot 1,400, 1,500 degrees air out the tailpipe. That's yep. like exit temperatures. Um, so don't be by anything that could catch on fire. Don't be by anything that people could walk by. You, you know, it is, you're not going to do this in the garage. Hot. Like, be smart. Yeah. You, you know, like, just be safe with this. Be smart. Um, be aware of, of your surroundings and knowing what you're doing. Uh, I think we already kind of covered it. I, a few of the trucks, newer trucks, you're more likely to have a button or something to be able to do an in-cab, you, you know, manual regen. Mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, some of the higher-end scan tools, some of the tuners out there, I think, give you the functionality. The Edge the Edge Insight CTS3 gauge display gives you the functionality on the newer platforms, which yeah. is super cool. So, you know, we've always spoke nothing but, you know, high regards to an Edge Insight monitor as kind of being your end-all be-all when it comes to, you know, monitoring engine PIDs. Sure. And with the Edge Insight 3, they now, you know, offer the incorporation of doing a manual regen if it's needed, which is pretty cool. Absolutely. So guys, uh, I hope this was a helpful episode talking a little bit more about how to do a manual regen or when to do a manual regen. Uh, I know we're we're working through some of these how-to episodes, uh, getting excited for the end of the season here. We got some cool sled pulling going on out there. Uh, if you are a sled puller and you'd like to talk to us or be on the show, please jump on over to Fans of Diesel Performance Podcast Facebook group. Shoot us a message, make a post there. We'd love to get you scheduled and get you on the show. For today, uh, I'm Paul Wilson. And I'm Chris Hemke. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's Jeremy from the Diesel Performance Podcast. Uh, this week we're going to bring you this 13 LML that I have behind me. A beautiful truck, a uh, customer brought in. We're going to dig into it a little bit and do a little bit of diagnostics. Um, he brought it in because he's having problems with a check engine light and the truck is having deaf quality codes uh, or lights, you could say. Um, so it has a message on the dash and it, it, the truck went in to reduce power uh, with the message on the dash and a check engine light to go along with that. So first thing we did is uh, hooked up our scan tool to it and I found that it had engine codes in it. It had a PO20EE code for knock sensor performance, which again goes with uh, the deaf quality. Um, and then it had a deaf quality light on as well. So that's what I needed to get in, I need to figure out. So the diagnostic uh, portion of this, um, what I had to do first is, it, like I said, is figure out the engine code. It was that 20 P20E code. Um, that was a knock sensor, but then I needed to figure out why that knock sensor code was coming up. Um, was it actually bad deaf fluid, old deaf fluid, um, or a bad batch, or was it just uh, a bad sensor? So. What I needed to do first is get that light off, okay? So I needed to do a deaf quality test on this truck. Um, and then once I started doing the, to do the deaf quality test on this truck, you have to use a scan tool to do that and to do a manual test on it. Um, there is no other way to do that. Um, 
What I ran into in the process of doing that is this truck wouldn't actually pass a def quality test. Um, the reason it wouldn't pass the def quality test is because the truck was due for a regen. Um, the truck wasn't and didn't want to regen on its own. So this truck will uh, like regen on its own at like 42 soot grams. The truck was all the way around 50 soot grams. So it was like getting pretty sooted up already. So what I actually had to do is I had to go through and do a manual regen on the truck first. So doing the manual regen with the scan tool, then I had to do the def quality test on it just to get the light to reset to do my diagnostics on it for that check engine light. So once I did that, I was able to now read and monitor my knock sensors for that 20E code. And I came to the diagnostics as in, the procedure where, hey, my sensor is bad, it's not reading properly, that's why it threw that light on. But I've also ran into the past where just a relearn will do that. But in this case, we had to replace the sensor. And after I replaced the sensor, we went out, we drove it, the truck seems to be great. Got about 100 miles on it and the truck's doing good. My pro tip for this week would be, um, Try not to do manual regen on a truck if you have to, or if you can avoid it and let the truck run and drive through a regen and continue driving until that regen is done. Um, the best thing you could do is have a monitor of some sort, a scan tool or monitor, and edge works the best. Um, it'll tell you when it's on and when it's actually in regen and when it's not. Um, if you could actually just drive the truck and let it complete the regen by itself instead of doing a manual regen on it. A manual regen is extremely hard on the trucks and don't suggest doing it unless you absolutely have to. But that's all I really got for today, guys. I'm really glad you're here listening, talking with me, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us today, guys. Uh, this has been Paul Wilson. And Chris Emke. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you again soon. This is the best you could do, dude.